my name is Abby Lynch and I'm the Teen Services Librarian here at the Brookfield Library. Back for another week of Teen Book Talks. This week we are talking about new graphic novels. We just got a ton of new graphic novels so I'm going to show you some of our latest additions to the collection with a whole variety of genres and art styles and hopefully they'll be something that you like. Um, since there's a lot to get through, I'm just going to get started, but as a reminder, we are open. You can come in and pick these books up in person if you'd like to browse, or you can always place a hold online at brookfieldlibrary.org or by calling 203-775-6241. And our summer reading program is going on, so when you stop by, make sure to pick up a teen summer reading bingo card um, to do some challenges, do some reading, and uh, get a chance to win some prizes. Anyway, let's get started. The first couple of books are uh, nonfiction. So this book is The Incredible Nellie Bly, journalist, investigator, feminist, and philanthropist by Luciana Semino, Sergio Algozino, and Laura Garofalo. Born in 1864, Nellie Bly was a woman who did not allow herself to be defined by the time she lived in. She rewrote the narrative and made her own way. This meticulously researched graphic novel biography tells Bly's story through Miriam, a fictionalized female student at the Columbia School of Journalism in 1921. While interviewing the famous journalist, Miriam learns not only about Bly's more sensational adventures, but also about her focus on self-reliance from an early age, the scathing letter to the editor that jump-started her career as a newspaper columnist, and her dedication to the empowerment of women. In fact, in 1884, Bly was one of the few journalists who interviewed Belva Ann Lockwood, who was the first woman candidate for, pre for a presidential election, a contest that was ultimately won by Grover Cleveland, and Bly predicted correctly that women would not get the vote until 1920. Of course, Bly's most well-known exploits are also covered. How she pretended to be mad in order to get institutionalized so she could carry out an undercover investigation in an insane asylum, and Bly's greatest feat of all, her journey across the world in 72 days alone, which was unthinkable for a woman in the late 19th century. As Miriam learns more of Bly's story, she realizes that the most important stories aren't necessarily the ones with the most dramatic headlines, but the ones that, in Nellie's words, come from a deep feeling. So that's the incredible Nellie Bly, and it's also available in ebook or e-comic format on Hoopla. And I'll just show off a couple of the interior pages. Here's one that's like a big spread that's a little bit more flashy, but something I was noticing while I was looking for art to show from this one is that the panels are really easy to follow in most of the pages. So um, it's they've got big panels and they're really easy to follow like the direction you should be reading in. So that's The Incredible Nellie Bly. Next up we have another nonfiction, Redbone, The True Story of a Native American Rock Band by Christian Stabler, Sonia Paoloni, and Tybalt Balahay. You've heard the hit song, Come and Get Your Love, in the movie Guardians of the Galaxy, but the story of the band behind it is one of cultural, political, and social importance. Brothers Pat and Lolly Vegas were talented Native American rock musicians that took the 1960s Sunset Strip by storm. They influenced the Doors and jammed with Jimi Hendrix before he was Jimmy, and the idea of a band made up of all Native Americans soon followed. Determined to control their creative vision and maintain their cultural identity, they eventually signed a deal with Epic Records in 1969. But as the American Indian movement gained momentum, the band took a stand, choosing pride in their ancestry over continued commercial reward. Created with the cooperation of the Vegas family, authors Christian Stabler and Sonia Paulini with the artist Tybalt Balahi take painstaking steps to ensure the historical accuracy of this important and overlooked story of America's past. Part biography and part research journalism, Redbone provides a voice to people long neglected in American history. So that's Redbone and the true story of a Native American rock band, and it's also available in ebook format on Hoopla. And this one has sort of two palettes it goes between. So that's one of them there. And another, and another sort of palette there. Next up we have The Sprite and the Gardener by Rhea Abrego and Joe Witt. Long, long ago, sprites were the caretakers of gardens. Every flower was grown by their hand, but when humans appeared and began growing their own gardens, the sprites' magical talents soon became a thing of the past. 
When Wisteria, an ambitious, kind-hearted sprite, starts to ask questions about the way things used to be, she'll begin to unearth her long-lost talent of gardening. But her newly honed skills might not be the welcome surprise she intended them to be. Join a neighborhood of sprites in this beautiful, gentle fantasy where both gardens and friendship blossom. So that's The Sprite and the Gardener by Rhi Abrego and Joe Witt. And it's also available in ebook format on Hoopla, although it might be fun to come in and take this one out. It's a huge book, you can see here. Um, so it's really good pictures of the artwork. Um, here's one of the pages I wanted to show. It's kind of a darker palette in a more pastel book. And here's more of what this book looks like. This one reminds me a little bit of the Tea Dragon Society, so if you liked that one, this would be one to check out. Next up, we have Secrets of Camp Whatever by Chris Grine. 11 year old Willow doesn't want to go to her dad's weird old summer camp any more than she wants her family to move to the weird old town where that camp is located. But her family and fate itself seem to have other plans of their own. Soon Willow finds herself neck deep in a confounding mystery involving stolen snacks, suspected vampires, and missing campers, all shrouded in the sinister fog that hides a generation of secrets at camp, whatever it's called. So that's Secrets of Camp Whatever by Chris Grine, and it's also available on Hoopla. Um, there's a lot of summer camp graphic novels, Lumberjanes and um, Be Prepared come to mind. So if you like those, this might be fun, a fun one to read. And here's uh, sort of what the art looks like. And that one's also available in ebook format on Hoopla. Next up, we have something from DC Comics, The Shadow Threat, um, which is the first book in this House of L series by Claudia Gray and Eric Zawadzki. Zahn is one of Krypton's elites, wealthy, privileged, a future leader. Sarah is one of Krypton's soldiers, strong, dedicated, fearless. Their rule-bound society has ordained that their paths should never cross. But ground quakes are shaking the planet's surface. Rebellious uprisings are shaking the populace. Krypton's top scientists, Jor-El and Lara, conduct a secret experiment that is meant to reform their planet from the cellular level up. Zahn and Sarah must join forces to investigate the hidden dangers truly threatening Krypton. In the process, they form a bond that will endure past the end of the world. So that's uh, House of L, The Shadow Threat by Claudia Gray and Eric Zawadzki, and it's also available in ebook format on Hoopla. And one of the interiors. Next up, we have Summer Spirit by Elizabeth Holoville. Being a teenager is hard enough without finding out your new best friend is a 60-year-old ghost. Louise spends every summer at her grandmother's house with her older sister and their cousins. But this summer, Louise realizes her relatives are fast growing up without her. While they're concerned with boy drama, Louise is suddenly feeling left alone. But then one day she meets Lisa, who will never, ever become a teenager. So that's Summer Spirit by Elizabeth Holville. And I really like the drawing style on this one. I like that the outlines are in navy. It, it makes it kind of gentle looking. The last book today is a scary one. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. And it is The Crossroads at Midnight by Abby Howard. This is a collection of tales from the faded border between our day-to-day -day world and the horrifying unknown on the other side of midnight. An old woman living alone on the edge of a bog gets an unexpected and unsettling visitor, throwing her quiet life into a long buried mystery. An isolated backwoods family stumbles into good fortune for a time with a monstrous discovery in the lake behind their house, but that time is running short. And a misfit little girl struggling to make friends meets an understanding soul one day at the beach but why will he only play with her alone at night? All these lonely souls and more have reached out into the darkness, not knowing what they might find. Around the dark edges of reality lurk unknown beings with unknowable intentions. Ordinary objects can become cursed possessions, entities who seem like friends can become monstrous, and those who seem monstrous can become the truest companions. In this collection of evocative, unnerving, slice-of-life horror, five stories explore what happens when one is desperate enough to seek solace in the unnatural and what might be waiting for us at the crossroads at midnight. Ooh. So that's The Crossroads at Midnight by Abby Howard. And I'm going to be honest with you, when I was flipping through this to flag artwork, um, the drawings are really scary. Some of them are really kind of freaky and scary. 
So if you do not like horror, I picked a pretty benign looking page to show, um, but it, it really is quite scary even just flipping through. There's these great kind of pen and ink black and white illustrations and that's the art style but that's I'm not going to flip through just because some of the illustrations were like really kind of spooky and freaky um so it will be great for horror fans but definitely not for the faint of heart all right well thank you so much for joining us today for our teen book talks uh we'll be back in two weeks with a new one in the meantime I hope to see you in the library come pick up a bingo card come to a program come ask for book suggestions um we are so happy to see you again all right, until next time, have a great week.